signs your husband doesn't love you anymore and things that you should not do. So this is a continuation of the first video, which is just signs your husband doesn't love you. And in that video, we covered a lot of points, not very deeply, but we covered a lot of points. In this video, I wanna tell you what not to do. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. The Marriage Foundation receives counselors' requests. It's a free service that we have. And so my response now is to many, many requests that we get. Those requests almost always include someone saying, I have done everything that I could and my husband is still not responding. Yes, I understand. So I'd like you to understand how our counselors and I see a comment like that. When you say, I've done everything that I could, it's everything that you have thought about. It's not everything that I've thought about or our counselors thought about because your experience is limited to that which you have heard, that which you have thought through yourself. And unfortunately, in this day and age, all of that is influenced by Western psychology because Western psychology has provided a false roadmap for marriages for so many years that their ideas have become institutionalized, accepted, and they're mostly wrong. Mostly wrong. That may sound like an audacious statement, but you ask yourself if Western psychologists know so much about marriage and it's their information that is leading people to do the things that they're supposed to do to save their marriage, why do they have a higher divorce rate as a group than the average? And it's not just a little bit higher. Personally, anecdotally, before I got into helping people with their marriages, I was a divorce mediator who got virtually all of my clients from, you guessed it, marriage counselors who failed. And in retrospect, when I look back at the people who I helped get a divorce amicably, with now what I know, I can't think of one couple that should have gotten a divorce, not one. So basically the reason their stuff does not work, which is everything that is impacting all the decisions you're making, is because they are negatively trained towards marriage. They see marriage as one problem after another. They don't have in their minds what an ideal marriage looks like. You can ask a marriage counselor, any of them, what is an ideal marriage? And they will give you BS answers. What is your answer to that question? I'll tell you what the correct answer is. The correct answer is the same answer that you would have if you understood marriage for why you got married in the first place. Subconsciously, you got married in order to be happier every single day of your life. Well, look at the nonsense that is out there regarding happiness. What does everyone, what does everyone say? They go, the wedding day is the woman's happiest day of her life. The implication then is that from that day forward, it goes downhill. Kind of crazy when you look at it that way, isn't it? Yet that's the truth. 
Couples are already fighting before they even get married. Does an ideal marriage include fighting? Yet, Western psychology promotes a right way to argue. There is no right way to argue when you're married. There's only two of you in this marriage. It's a soul union. It's a union between two souls, soulmates, right? So you're in what I call a sacred space of marriage, your soulmates. But if you don't know how to behave, which obviously you don't, if you're questioning if your husband loves you anymore, then what has happened is you have dropped your relationship down to a lower class relationship. It's no longer at the level of soulmates. It's at the level of cellmates. You're fighting. You're ignoring one another. There's coldness. There's harsh looks. There's criticism in your mind. There's criticism in your words. There's criticism in your actions. I've heard some incredible stories from people where the husband no longer loves his wife and he sabotages her. What do you do? You can't follow the Western psychological principles because they're negative. For instance, they will say, well, and it'll sound like so much common sense. For instance, they'll say, well, you should ask your husband. No, you should not ask your husband. Because if you can tell, and you can tell that your husband's, and let's change the context a little bit, that the love for you that he is displaying is far from the love for you that he used to display when you were dating. Let's change the context into more realistic because you don't know whether he loves you or not. Love, again, is at the level of the soul, which Western psychology says is an abstract thought. And I'm here to tell you, no, it isn't. And you know it isn't. You are a soul. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. The proof of that is you experience love. They say love is an emotion, abstract thought again. So you can't put it in a test tube, so you call it an abstract thought, and you pretend that that love that you felt and still feel is not reality, it's abstract. No, in fact, everything else is abstract. The love is real. But neither of you learned how to manifest that in your marriage. Neither of you learn, going back to the original premise, that you got married, that you get married, to be happier every day of your life. Further, no one ever told you this almighty truth, that part of the marriage promise is that you will experience unconditional love which by definition love by definition is not a greater like love is its own thing and it has no boundaries we learned about infinity way back when we were kids our minds cannot wrap around infinity what else can your mind not wrap around your mind cannot wrap around love. When you experience that love, your mind is lost in the dust because you are a soul and your mind is a material thing and it can't keep up with the soul. And when you're married, what you're supposed to do is unite these two souls, you and your husband, but you have to do it using the mind using your will, using your volition. Now, in the earlier video, I said, get one of my books. The books are fine 
for about 20% of the people because there's too much information that you need that is more focused on bringing your souls back together. And so you really need the course for women. That's what will do the trick for you. And it won't just help your marriage a little bit. No, it'll show you step by step how to create the marriage that you were supposed to have from day one, where you're experiencing happiness, continually increasing happiness, where you're experiencing love, unconditional love that is ever expanding from the heart. You get drunk with love when you know what you're doing. You're walking around on cloud nine when you know what you're doing. And you are able to do this. These Western psychologists have no clue. None of them. If they did, all of them would be transformed. But they don't. And the reason why is actually kind of simple. It's not their fault. But they are trained to look at problems. Psychologists are trained to identify mental illnesses. And their approach to dealing with those mental illnesses is wrong, basically. It's wrong. They don't understand the core concept that you are a soul who possesses a mind. This mind belongs to you, which means it's not, I'm, I'm not implying this. I'm telling you straight out. It means you're responsible for every single thought, every single feeling, every single, everything that's going on up there is up to you. Now, do we master the mind? Very few. Over the course of a lifetime, though, as we make the continual effort to master the mind, continual effort, the rewards are phenomenal. You don't have to master the mind to enjoy that mental bliss that is really the soul bliss that is gained by learning how to love unconditionally. That's what you need to learn. And the Western psychologists don't have a clue about that because they see the soul and love as abstract thoughts. So they get into the problems. They have this negative approach. And it's crazy because what they're doing is they're blaming everybody and everything, circumstances, what happened to you as a child, what happened to your husband as a kid. All of these things are now deciding your fate. Nonsense. You decide your fate every second. You control your thinking. You control your feelings. You control what your mind will do. But you do have to learn what is influencing your mind. This is why that course is so important for you to take. Not just so you could have a better marriage, not just so you could save your marriage. That's not good enough. I want you to have the same kind of marriage that I have, the same kind of a marriage that thousands of our clients over the past 20 years now have, where you are in charge, where the happiness that you have is tangible. The love that you feel is the most tangible of all of your experiences in life. This is a very important message because it contradicts all of the other messaging out there that is so negative and keeps us enslaved in these dramas, these awful feelings, these insecurities, these negative judgments. It's an imprisonment that you can break out of and enjoy that which you're meant to enjoy by getting married. Marriage is so unique in this whole world. Wherever you go, everyone wants something from you. In marriage, you're supposed to give 
and give and that love just flows through and it's so unique because when you give to your husband and when your husband gives to you you're giving to the same entity the marriage you should be swimming in joy ah I once heard a poem, I, a tiny bubble of laughter, have become the sea of mirth itself. Very lofty. It's all about love. It's all about love, my dear. Learn and apply. Learn and apply. Get comfortable with this idea. Subscribe to the channel so you hear more and more messages that are akin to this one. It's a very positive message about marriage. It's not negative. It's not labeling your husband. It's not putting him down. It's not putting you down. It's talking about what you have right in front of you and how to make that happen. And with that, my blessings to you my wish for you to achieve the gold of marriage, the love that you deserve. Thank you and God bless.